Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy God's fire! Let me just show you five seeds and then we're done that I want you to sow. Five seeds as a challenge. If you make up your mind to sow these seeds, ladies and gentlemen, people of God, I give you a guarantee by the integrity of the word that you will be ready for a 2023 that will be a sign and a wonder indeed. Are you ready? Acts chapter 2, please. Let's start from verse 42. Since whatsoever can be a seed, I need to choose the whatsoever that is consistent with the matters of the Spirit. Guess what the Bible says? And they continued steadfastly. Somebody say continued steadfastly. The stamina to remain is based on this revelation. Starting is easy, but continuing. You see, I understand your zeal for January, but by June, will you still be on fire? It says they continued steadfastly in number one doctrine. This time, the apostles doctrine is the word instructions listening to instructions doctrine there represents the word of god in its entirety all the precepts that make for the stature and the maturity of the believer i can invest in the study of the word and it's a seed i am sowing in the spirit is someone learning now so you make up your mind that i'm going to sow seeds of spiritual intelligence i will invest in the word buy the truth he says and sell it not the truth is not cheap believe me it will cost you if you can find my teaching by the truth i taught you on the five currencies that buy the truth currency number one is hunger hunger is a currency that buys the truth currency number two is meekness and humility these are currencies that buy the truth You must commit yourself that in the name of Jesus, I will immerse myself in the word as a farmer that is sowing diligently. Listen, the days that we live in right now will not entertain spiritual ignorance. Spiritual ignorance can literally, without exaggeration, cost you your life. Many have been destroyed. Many have even died in an untimely way because they did not understand the power of the word of God listen please look up the Bible says you only arise and you shine to the degree to which your light comes you must make up your mind as a diligent farmer to invest in the word that is the first seed I want you to sow the seed of spiritual diligence in the word dig deep stay with God until the word of God the light of his word drives away ignorance from your life when you sow that seed let me tell you the truth there is no limit to how far you will rise and how far God will take you when you invest in the word hoping that you will rise just by luck is a joke many people do not invest in the word or casually invest in the world and then they want results of people with stamina no god cannot be mocked a student who reads for five minutes glossing through his notes would barely remember anything at all in the exam hall versus a student who is diligent studious as a covenant convenient or not Except for other things like demonic interferences, if not, their results should not be the same. So, don't just this is the year that you will not just admire people and go back in jealousy and pain. Make up your mind, you have your own farm too. It's time to stop admiring someone else's farm and settle down to cultivate. Uh, there's a saying, uh, your pastor would know that is an authority in that area. They say the grass looks greener in the other side. The question is, who is the owner of that farm? 
if the grass looks greener on the other side no grass no farm starts with green grass every farm starts with trouble there from all kinds of things plus wild animals it takes the diligence of a farmer blisters in his hands to clear them do everything plant ridges and then you plant something that grows and it becomes a source of admiration to all listen this year make up your mind to stop admiring other people's farms get to work and tell yourself in the name of jesus christ some of you have left your farm forever i know in agriculture there's what they call um bush following is enough your own is enough get back and walk that thing let the beauty and the glory of jesus be revealed don't be a man of God and people are suspecting you whether you are really saved. Because every revelation, your scriptures are wrong, your prophecies are wrong, the revelation you are sharing is not correct. Habad, go back and walk. So in the spirit, not for competition, but go back and tell yourself in the name of Jesus that any platform that Jesus gives me to reveal his glory, I will not go down with shame and reproach. Shout amen. Amen. invest in the word invest in the word number two acts chapter 2 and verse 42 they gave themselves to the doctrine of the apostles number two fellowship fellowship the bible says in psalm 133 it says behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity unity is more than just cohesion coming together it's a state in the spirit fellowship fellowship are we together fellowship when you invest in fellowship watch this especially the corporate gathering of believers there are many things that happen to you when you are in the house of god that may not happen in your personal secret place let me tell you that sincerely for instance the bible says there the lord has commanded the blessing even life forevermore there's something we call the corporate anointing. No matter how in tune you are to the Holy Spirit, you cannot have the experience of the corporate anointing in your personal time with God. Because the corporate anointing is a sharing of everybody's personal dealings with God made available on the platform of unity. That means there is a dimension of experience I don't have with God. And if someone who has that dimension comes, by the power of unity, I can drink of the blessedness of that experience. Hallelujah. Unity. That you sow into fellowship. Whether it is convenient or not, remember it is a seed. It's time to go to church. Satan, you are a liar. Rain or no rain, I'm on my way to the house of God. Especially that you are a walker. This is the year where you throw away flimsy excuses. The Bible says, seeing that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Is that in your Bible? It says, let us lay aside every weight and the seed. Wait, there talk of excuses too. If you look for excuses, you will always find one. And run with perseverance, he says, the race that is set before us. Fellowship as a seed. So my coming to church, so my working in church is a seed. Keep sowing, your reward is coming. When it's time to clean the pulpit, you are here with joy. Father, thank you for the honor of beautifying your house. People will laugh and say, oh, this church girl, I'm sure she thinks she'll get a husband in church. Don't worry. The day God will sort you where he will not if, if God gives you a husband alone that is not even enough you know there are people who represent nations when they looked at two children in her stomach they said there are two nations not two children there are prepared blessings that God can bring people in one day while you are cleaning the place the person who will make you the African director of his company just walks into church and says, I'm looking for Pastor Kingsley. I say, oh no, he's not around. I say, okay, but you're a diligent lady in the house of God. What do you do? Well, I read this. Say, that's not my business. The fact that you can walk in the house of God. Do you have a job? Say, I've never worked since I graduated. So you are the one the Holy Spirit spoke to me about. The rewarder. When people hear, say, is that all the story? 
that is all the story it is favor my brother it is favor it's not it's not everything yes sir yes sir are we together if you don't believe what i just told you you are not a christian that means you don't believe god rewards How many of your properties are in Lagos? But they are as harvests. You will never get them because you didn't sow anything. In the house of God, while you are sowing, God will vow a vow with himself. Because you did this, your children will never have to beg for bread again. Years ago, I used to play keyboard for a ministry, one of the ministries that went to preach for Basanjo when he was in prison. It was my keyboard pastor, small keyboard. I would carry it. The church, just, they came and opened a branch. It was a prison ministry that just started a church service. And I would go to our local assembly and when I returned their church, their meeting was afternoon meeting. I would carry my keyboard and trek to a hotel that they were using. My own keyboard. I would trek to the hotel, set it up. You, you know all the things that happen in church. This one is frowning. This I would just mind my business and play and go back. Let me tell you the truth. You may have heard me say it in my teachings. Nobody ever told me thank you. I stand before the God of heaven. I never knew that one day I will have an apostolic call. But there were seeds. There were times that it, it, I would be so tired. You know how church sometimes, you know, things can happen when you are doing your best and it looks like it's not. The only thing I remember was during one time, one time they were launching the man of God's cassette and I got one cassette and one bottle of Fanta. One cassette, free, I didn't pay for, and then one bottle of Fanta. That's the only thing I can remember getting, but I made up my mind that, Lord, if it is for your glory, I didn't know that heaven was recording it. Farmer, keep sowing, keep sowing, keep sowing, keep sowing. There is nobody who comes out of nowhere. Please bury that demonic mindset once and for all. Just because you don't know where they came out from does not mean they did not come. They, look, let me tell you, there are laws. God cannot be mocked. God cannot trust you with the destinies of men. You can deceive men, but there are laws in the realm of the spirit. There is a strict immigration system. You don't bribe your way into certain realms of influence you don't bribe your way into certain levels of honor notoriety and grace there is a track record that god himself vets. so when you see your pastor today and what god is doing in his life you see when you see masters operate the proof of mastery is ease usually the steps are beyond plain sight People have so worked their system, they have mastered how it works. So you will be mistaken to think just because it's easy for them, it is easy. It is easy for masters, but not easy. Hallelujah. If I begin to tell you some of the things that we did spiritual, oh dear, this is not the night to discuss this, but let me just tell you the truth. If you sow to the flesh, you will reap of the flesh corruption. Apostle, but people have annoyed me. This is the year I said, me, I will not keep quiet. Uh -uh. That's why God sent you here tonight. You have done well to sow nice seeds. You want the devil to deceive you now. To cancel everything. Because you want to be yourself. The Bible does not tell us to be ourselves. It tells us to be like Christ. It's a risk being yourself. You better find out what is in yourself before you want to be it. He says we should be like Christ. Paul said in this flesh there is nothing that is good. We 
within this flesh he marked himself and this was his assessment i hope you understand the concepts of be yourself that i that i i'm not saying don't find expression i just mean that the the, the, the man of the flesh without the assistance of the spirit I look back today and I thank God for the times of prayer with no reward. There was a time in my life, you would not believe this, where I would buy bread and put granite. You know how you put granite? Don't act like you don't know what I'm saying. Bread and put granite. Are we together? Yeah. With ginger. I think it's a healthy meal. No wonder we are still standing. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that are Hearts always hunger for Hearts always hunger for When we started ministry, sir I remember the first crusade that we went for We were going there by faith Just because God said to me While the crusade was going on you know what it means to preach in a miracle service with bills waiting for you? The people you are owing are there while you are shouting Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. And to make matters worse, the sick now genuinely get healed. Who is that God that heals the sick? I remember when that crusade was over and everybody was returning we didn't have the transport to return people but it was a mighty meeting not so much i i don't think maybe the entire crusade ground may not be more than the people who were seated here but it was with honor and joy what is there to be ashamed of we were starting and with nobility yet that little thing would be a global ministry that would bless people who has laughed at you who has looked at you and despised your little beginning and you are about to join them to kill that little beginning not knowing that the whole world one day will rejoice at the investment of God's hand upon you let me tell you the truth the pressure that I went through after that crusade it would take a madman to do another one and as soon as we went back I didn't even rest God said to do another one again by the next year I said God what is this I was looking for 150,000 naira to sort some of the people. I know you think it's little. Someone signed a check for me. I called the people to come and take it. When they came and went to the bank, the check bounced and they said, this time we're not coming alone. You know what that means? We're not coming alone. I didn't steal. I didn't kill. What was your offense? For your glory, I will do anything just to see you, to be holy as my name. Listen, it was at those times and within those processes that we saw certain things my faith did not just develop from bible study alone pain was a gift that stretched that faith there are things that you go to where no matter how you cry god answers your prayer by leaving you there i know you don't like what i'm telling you now hmm. there are times that you've been left in that situation it's an answer to your prayer God is telling you, you are going to be healing nations. And now you are in a situation. And while you are right there, God says, stay. I'm working on you. Fear not, he says, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. 
it says when you pass through the waters i will be with you through the rivers he said it will not overwhelm you then he says when you walk through fire you don't run through fire you walk because there are things that fire must roast pride flesh vain glory those are the seeds that you are that you are carrying to go and sow and god says no when you walk to i can do it by myself let's go when you see people starting out in life and they are arrogant don't fight them just leave them there is already a system if it's god they are following something in their life will work on it one day you see the person after five years and he says good afternoon so i say what happened <laughs> the refiner's fire maybe someone is in that season right now you must interpret what you call answered prayer there are many people god answered your prayer from the day you started crying in fact the tears was because the prayer was answered and he said stay there there is something about the nature of man you need to learn if you don't learn this you cannot be a great leader you are going to be birthing nations but there is something naomi I need something there is something you need to know about the faithfulness of God otherwise you will not appreciate the favor that comes from the farm of Boaz God give me Abraham he's making you Sarah now why are you complaining it is only Sarah that can marry Abraham <laughs> if it is Abraham you want to marry then focus on being Sarah and let me tell you go and read about Sarah it takes more than beauty to be Sarah. Is someone learning? I want to be David. Right. Whoever sits on that throne and last must be David. So while you have claimed David, God is saying, let's go through the training of David. And I said, Lord, I don't want that. Just give me Melchizedek or the one, you know, somebody's training and make, magically make me David. Be careful what name you ask from the Bible because all the names have the requisite the names are harvests you know how you go to a store and you say I like this I like this and forget the price tag there are some things that are so expensive it's a mockery to put price tags there there are cars that you go you don't even touch them have you seen that now you are not allowed at all you don't in fact they have to vet you to allow you get they don't want to destroy the relationships they have with other people so you can see it looking cheap and he said this is cheap i can take on this put this in the basket put this in the basket this little one add it to and then when they make the bill it's more than your house rent that's how life is listen i'm wrapping up most of us love to claim realms and dimensions and harvests uh, God, mix Benny Hinn, Reinhard Bonke, RTL Osborne, and a little of Billy Graham. Excellent combo. And God says, let's go. After one month, you are casting God, binding God, and saying, no, this fasting is too, this can't, God does not work like this. Give your car, give your houses, carry everything and bring it. Say, no way. It's not my God. The one who died does not behave like that. And yet that's the harvest you want. I hope I'm not wasting your time. Lord, I want to carry the anointing and grace that brings healing to nations. It is available. I was told a story years ago. Maybe this will be the last story and then we'll pray. A gentleman, I, I think it's, it's, it's fiction just to explain, to illustrate something. That this gentleman was frustrated and he said lord serving you does not seem to pay i'm tired of this thing there are no rewards you are blessing other people and other people are suffering you know the monkey they walk baboon they chop thing and then one time he was caught up in the realm of the spirit and i think he went to heaven or something like that then he entered a room that had crosses cross many crosses representing the assignment the mandates and the burden that men carried on earth and then the Lord told him, okay, since you have complained and charged me unfaithful, pick whichever one that you want. He saw some giant crosses. He saw some, and then he saw one tiny one that looked like a necklace. And he ran quickly to pick it. And the Lord told him, but that's the one you always had. You are just picking the same thing. 
that you had and he said this thing so there are people carrying these other ones that those are the ones you are envying on it behind every glory no there is not only a story behind every glory there is a track record of seeds 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 my concern right now is to keep sowing the seeds that make for glory seeds that make for advancement seeds that make for sowing in the spirit i will pray like never before i will fast like never before i will study the word of god like never before let's finish up acts 2 42 they gave themselves continually to number one doctrine the word number two fellowship number three the breaking of bread communion unity breaking of bread there does not just mean communion like holy communion alone it's it's symbolic again an extension of fellowship a state of unity that whatever price you can pay to be at peace with the brethren within the context of the house of god sometimes it is inconveniencing but make sure you never lose capacity to break bread that means you will endure a lot of things you may be misunderstood but you are mandated to break bread and that with a joyful heart and finally he says prayer you sow the seeds the word i'm coming to the house of god i live in peace with the brethren regardless what is happening in my department i make up my mind as a revelation that i will not be offended i will serve whether it's convenient or not i will give my best not with hypocrisy and eye service like the bible admonishes us you see that and whilst you are doing that the bible says you are sowing to the spirit and it leaves you with an assurance that you will reap life the fifth seed of course that I want to add here is the seed of obedience ladies and gentlemen please hear me in one word faith is obedience in one word faith is obedience you are not walking in faith if you are not obedient Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 and 2 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and obey all the commandments which I command you this day that is the seed what is the harvest that the Lord your God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth verse 2 says and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to obey your pastor he gives you an instruction and I take this as the voice of God over my life I will be obedient oh all of you people church people that they are doing as if they are controlling you is a seed you can choose to sow to the flesh or to the spirit and the Lord comes to honor you and says gentlemen it's time to lift you to the nations and people will ask you how did you get here and you will tell them by the grace of God the things that we enjoy today are harvests from the seeds that we have sown I made up my mind that I would be very meticulous about the seeds that I sow and with a greater sense of intention and consciousness I have paid attention to seeds that I sow in every area of my life any harvest I do not want I will not sow the seed and if for any reason I have sown the seed then I will do what I'm about to lead you to do to cry for mercy and say Lord let those seeds die thank God in the Bible seeds can die that is good news because the farmer sowed and there were some seeds that died that means there is a condition Lord whatever condition will make these negative seeds I have sown to die there are some of you who need to pray it because the jealousy the envy the ill speakings I shouted I said you are telling lies and you say if I'm lying let me die it was sown based on how many times you have said it only God knows how many days are left you must trust God for grace and kill that seed I'm not threatening you be not deceived God cannot be mocked it's 
So the Bible says we can make spiritual investments. Your pastor is a financially intelligent man and many of you here are financially intelligent. There is only one way money grows, investments. Money is a type of anything that grows, investments. The only way your spirit man grows is by investing in it. The only way your home will grow, you cannot do nothing as a husband and want the result of someone actively investing in his family. It's called fraud. Apostle, I'm tired of poverty. Stop wishing. Start sowing. Sow into your mind. Sow into knowledge. Sow into the lives of those who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. Every mountain is relative to the victim looking at it. To an ant, what you call a little mold hill is a mountain. But to an adult who is standing, you can jump across it. What you are calling mountain is relative to your perception. Learn from those. He says, go to them that sell and buy. There is a level of anointing you are trusting God to step into. And it looks like you are limited. Stop calling those more anointed than you colleagues. Humble yourself and follow with diligence. Colleague mentality has deceived many people. You don't receive from colleagues. For many of you, your pastor is prophesying over your life. And you say, well, I can hear later on. Thank God I have money to buy the tape. The Holy Spirit is not a fool. Even though he's the spirit of God, the state of your heart can make you abort precious moments because of lack of discernment. I hope I didn't offend you. It's time to begin to make spiritual investment. Listen, irresponsibility is one of the things that is destroying the church in Africa. We sit down and just wish because of the presence of grace. We just wish that everything just happens. I will magically have a church that is flourishing like this. I will magically have partners come to stand with me. Whether I have integrity or not, it does not matter. I will magically have power whether I pray or not. Whether there's consecration or not. I will magically become an anointed man of God sound in doctrine. Whether I buy books or not, it doesn't matter. Pastor Stapes, is he the only man of God? And God is watching you. After sowing all those negative seeds, don't stand with what you know today and say, why is my life like this? You beat your wife, you insult your children, you compare her with other people, call her prostitute, respectfully speaking, or you do the same to your husband. Say, I don't know whether I married a man or a woman in this house. You keep prophesying negative and demonic harvest. And the man says, I will remain a woman to you. I will be a man to those who honor me as a man. Then since you have carried me as a fellow woman, we'll be, two of us will be women in this house. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but as for me, oh, this journey we're just starting. No matter how people clap, I know we're just starting. There are high level nation shifting seeds that we need to begin to sow. The seeds we are sowing now is not for ourselves again. It's not for tea and bread again. Seeds that bring revivals in nations in one day. These are the kinds of seeds. Seeds of prayer. Lord, change Africa. Change the spiritual cl climate of this nation. For someone, you need to single-handedly go and start sowing seeds of revival over your children. Complaining and saying, I don't know what kind of demons I gave birth to. Mama, stop that complaint and go back. In the name of Jesus, if they came out from my womb, they must have my God. You are sowing seed. Forget about whether he's sleeping in a beer parlor. You just sow the seed. Be not deceived. God cannot be mocked. Finally, there are many of you who have never given to anybody. Financially speaking, every time there is a call in the house of God, you act as if it's not you they are talking to. And God is watching you. It doesn't matter whether you have money or not. In the realm of the spirit, it's still the same because there is nothing that the kingdom does not have and there's no signature that, Lord, you have done this and I'm blessing you. I'm not talking about money. I'm just challenging you holistically. You want to gain momentum and to make progress. I made up my mind 
that I will sow, I will be a giver. I will never preach what I don't believe. And I will not preach what I don't do. If I'm preaching, giving, then I will not be the person to sit down and withhold. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. That's, there is he that withholdeth more than his meat. I hate poverty. It is not good. So wishing it and saying poverty will not come to me. That is not the harvest for prosperity. The harvest for prosperity is to sow seeds of diligence, seeds of relationship, seeds of value. Are we together now? Let's pray. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. So you do what you do. We need a more. Let's sing it one more time. You are crying your heart to Him. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Say. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. In 2007, I was tired of, in this case now, my financial condition. I remember I went for a conference, Pastor. I really was sad. Not because I'm not a materialistic person at all. But poverty is bad. Whether you are materialistic or not, it is wicked and demonic. Let me tell you why poverty is bad. Because it interrupts the well-being of your life and the advancement of the program of God. If poverty were neutral, I would not have any problem with it. But it can interrupt you in a way that even sickness will not interrupt you. But I remember that night, it was a prosperity convention. People gave, I was outside. When I went home, the Lord gave me an instruction give literally everything I had. I'm not calling for seeds, don't worry. Listen. I got up that morning 3 p.m. God is my witness. Carried, it was not so much I had, but I was, de I was determined. Wishing to rise is wasting your time. Mm -mm. Desire is important, but it's only the first step. Desire must intermeddle with wisdom to profit you. And with wisdom, there must be action. The Bible calls it well-doing. More than well-thinking. More than well-wishing. There must be a doing for it to be called sowing. And I made up my mind. I remember the next, I prayed for three hours. Laid my hands on that, whatever it is. My, my bag. I got up and I dragged it to church. I got to church and there, it was an overflow like this. I was outside. People came and were dropping seeds on the altar. And now I stayed back there. God just instructed me to remain there. When everybody had dropped it, God said, I can now go to the altar. I carried that bag and I was dragging it. With every step I knew I was dying. There, you see, it's easy to give Ishmael. But if it is Isaac Bar, you must be a man of faith. I took that thing and I dropped it at the altar. I went back and I sat down. I say this with every sense of humility and responsibility. The Holy Spirit spoke to me expressly and said, Son, from this day, you have entered wealth. Nothing happened immediately. Nothing my life changed. It was the same, same thing there. 
that was a seed there are seeds that are called precious seeds he that weepeth bearing precious seeds shall doubtless return again rejoicing bringing in the sheaves I look back today and I just laugh I say my God what if I disobeyed that day what if I loved my yesterday more than my tomorrow like many of you now love your today more than tomorrow remember the Bible says for our light afflictions which is what for a moment it worketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory I remember a time when the Lord instructed me for 72 hours I locked myself praying non-stop my eyes did not see whether it was morning or afternoon or evening ah you are just lucky hallelujah after that time I said Lord wherever you want to use me I'm available that you can use me for your glory those times then there was no internet like this and it was a cafe I would get a fluffy disc and go and I didn't have the money to pay and browse anytime I like and then in the night it seemed to, to browse faster so I would go there in the night and spend night vigils downloading messages and teachings that will help me because I was desperate to grow not competition not ministry Jesus There are two prayer points we're going to pray. My apologies for stretching a bit with the time. The first prayer is going to be the prayer of mercy. Please listen. There are many of us right now, if God were to leave your harvest based on the seeds you have sown, except you want to lie in the house of God, you know that you have sown to the flesh. Carnality, unseriousness, prayerlessness. It comes to be part of the whatsoever that can be sown. Jealousy, hatred, bitter envy, wordlessness, prayerlessness, laxity. When others were praying in the new year, you were just snoring your way into a new dangerous season that requires discernment. While men slept, the Bible says the enemy came. We are going to pray, standing upon the grace that is in this house. That father for every negative seed that I have sown I've despised the prophecy of the man of God he has spoken over my life and I despised it I obtained grace by the blood of Jesus let those negative seeds be destroyed I do not want a harvest please pray forget about acquisition acquisition is tertiary over the primary over goal of lifting, use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be concentrated. Let your mind be Holy God's fire!